Okay, so this will be an introductory video to my upcoming analytical breakdown on plasticity versus Fusion 360 and plasticity versus Moi 3D. I've been away for some time. It's not my fault. There are a lot of updates rolling out in the 3D community and that's making most of my scripts outdated. Plasticity's recent update is top-notch. Still got some flaws though and we will discuss all that in a bit but to appreciate the journey so far let's begin with plasticity 2023 if you are into hard surface design sci-fi merch or just love precision modeling plasticity's 2023 debut felt like a revelation and we all felt that it pitched itself as a cut for artists a lightweight affordable nerves too built not for engineers but for us concept artists world builders right people who need to iterate fast without drowning in industrial design complexity now let's take a quick peek into version 2023 plasticity stripped away everything that made tools like fusion 360 or more intimidating no parametric history trees, no assembly constraint, just pure fluid nerves modeling with an unbelievably clean UI. It understood artists, Blender users especially, those familiar shortcuts, G for grab, R for rotate, context sensitive widgets that only shows up when you needed them the most. It was laser focused on letting you create not configure and at 149 i think 139 49 there about dollars it democratized precision modeling in a way we would we'd never seen before but here is the twist plasticity wasn't trying to be fusion 360 it knew its lane industrial designers needed tolerance cam outputs bombs if you needed to make a spaceship hall look flawless, continuous for a render, or quickly bullying together complex shapes without topology nightmares, that's where Plasticity 2023 shined. Visual prototyping, not factory ready parts, but cinema ready parts. Now, fast forward, Plasticity 2025.1. I see most people ask on their forums and other comment sections if it levels up. I think it does. Let me make it easier for you. First, real time boolings. We are talking complex multi object cards and unions that update instantly. No more spinning wheels. Compared to 2023, it's like swapping a bicycle for a jet engine. Maybe that's too much, but sort of and for blender users this feels like a speed or the speed we expected from ev but for card operations then there is the sub division nerves hybrid workflow 2025.1 bless that line beautifully now you can push and pull nerve surfaces almost like their subdivision meshes but with mathematical precision underneath it's organic control meeting engineering rigor for concept artists this is huge imagine blocking out a creature's armor with the fluidity of zbrush then refining edges with cut level accuracy or in one now to the big question is plasticity anywhere near perfect based off the route it's taken I wouldn't conclude on that because of these two big issues. Number one is going to be rendering. There is still no integrated material or lighting preview. You must round trip to Blender or Keyshot to see how that chrome really reflects. That breaks the flow. Second is animation prep. Converting nerves to clean animatable quad meshes it's better, but not magic. 
you likely still need blender for retopology if characters or deformations are your goal okay before i get into some of its game changing recent updates this is my final verdict on plasticity's journey so far plasticity 2025.1 isn't just an update it's a statement it doubles down on being sharper faster and more intuitive than ever for concept artist or concept design sorry it won't replace blender for rendering or animation and it shouldn't but as your precision modeling sidekick it's now indispensable for 199 usd it's great it closes critical gaps while staying true to its vision complexity without complications and so now what next what feature would you add to plasticity better retopology real-time materials let me know below in the comment sections and if you've loved the video so far kindly smash the like and share button if you've not subscribed kindly do so okay let's tackle the first thing you'll notice in plasticity 2025.1 the modernized interface remember how the 2023 version felt minimalist compared to cut giants well 2025.1 takes it further not just clean but clever it's like the savage artist mid workflow saw where our eyes got lost and surgically removed every pixel of friction and updates like these might not get the needed praise but they contribute to quicker workflows ever been deep in the flow of modeling only to hit a roadblock and lose your monument searching for answers we've all wasted time alt tabbing to tutorials plasticity 2025.1 solves this perfectly instant two tips hover over any of the 11 major tools get a quick cheat sheet right on screen no more breaking your focus there is also the one click help it's like having a silent helper in your workspace giving answers without disrupting your workflow or creativity another thing will be the star right to the point workflow and that's my favorite touch dragging recent files straight into the viewport and boom it's imported it's those microsecond savings that adds up to hours saved per project now this is why i think animators should care if you are like me jumping between blender for animation and plasticity for hard surface modeling i mean most people would most blender users would mention hard ups and box cutter but let's be serious in this bush this ui is a bridge less cognitive switching costs fewer context shift it meets us where we already work for concept artists it means more time sketching in 3d less time managing the two that's just how i see it now is it flawless almost i'll still love custom ui scaling for 4k screens some icons feel tiny on my workstation and while the two tips help a built-in interactive tutorial like blender's splash screen tips would onboard new users faster okay so this is just my takeaway what you see now in plasticity isn't just a fresh coat of paint it's a workflow accelerator by cutting clutter adding smart dogs and making file handling frictionless plasticity 2025.1 turns ui design into speed design your focus stays locked on the art not the interface all right now for those bent on precision there are two new tools that fix real pain points for hard surface artists the unified slide command and section analysis now the unified slide command i'd call it a precision on rails remember wrestling with control vertices on complex curves tweaking a whole point only to nudge adjacent geometry out of alignment 
the new slide command fixes that. It lets you glide CVs along splines or surface edges without distorting the underlying structure. And the second one being the section analysis is what I will call your model's inner truth. Ever modeled a complex engine or armor assembly only to realize after rendering that the internal component clips through each other? This too slices your model like a laser, revealing cross sections in real time. These two features are thoughtful but not perfect. For now, I think the unified slide control needs edge weighing controls for organic transitions. Testing that feature out made me feel something like that would really be of help. Also, the section analysis could use measurement overlays for technical accuracy. But let's be real, these aren't just features. They are workflow guardians. They prevent costly mistakes before they reach rendering or animation stages. And you would attest to its importance more if you work within pipelines like we do over here. Modeling in plasticity, then animating in Blender. That is where these two tools shine, saving you days of revision. Slide ensures your surfaces deform cleanly. Section analysis guarantees internal assembly works. That's less time fixing, more time creating. For $199 like I made mention of before, that's insurance money well spent. Now the update I made mention of before are just about the most important update I came across simply because maybe they favor my workflow more. Yes, and so with these other updates I'll be mentioning, I'll just run through them very quick, right? Making them brief. Number one, we have the sketching tool. Now way smarter. You can now lock your caps to a surface while drawing and snap the ends perfectly to other shapes. Why would such a feature matter? Well, Building things like robot legs or weapon shapes now feels as smooth as drawing on paper, but with the accuracy of a professional CAD too. It's like getting the speed of ZBrush with the precision of Fusion 360 all in one. Other tools like the Transformation tool and Surface tools also got great updates. Now for the studio license holders, let's talk about the X. NEBS. The integrated XNEBS 2024.1 engine is a game changer. Its square command now handles insane edge cases. Think non planar openings, asymmetric boundaries, or mixed continuity constraint. Building that perfect panel gap on a curved mesh torso, what used to take five manual patches now solves in one click. It's AI level surfacing without the black box. And this is why these tools matters. These aren't some type of sexy additions. They are workflow steroids. Sketching faster means iterating more concept. Transformations holding continuity means less cleanup in Blender. XNEPs solving nightmare gaps that days reclaiming per project. Plasticity is proven that refining core tools beat chasing shiny objects. Are plasticity tools flawless? Not quite. I'd consider Surface 2 preset a must-have addition. Saving custom settings would massively speed up repetitive tasks. And while XNEPS is magic, remember, it needs clean input geometry garbage in garbage out but at 199 this upgrade transforms plasticity from a mere tool into a true creative collaborator okay if you love this video then sub to my channel would be really grateful as my channel has not been doing well at all in the recent months and I know people watch a lot, but people don't really comment, like, 
or share. And so I would like you to share your opinion, what you think on the recent update. And also if you have for some reason come across some of the most asked questions on certain forums that have not had answers yet, you can drop them down in the comment sections below and I'll see if I or anybody watching could help out. Until my next video, peace.